All right, CNT 140, Chapter 17, we're coming back, second podcast. Uh, the next section, they talk about wrong pinouts. They introduced this concept in Chapter 15. We spent just a little time on it, but we're going to spend our time now. Uh, it's the reason I didn't spend a whole lot of time before. We're looking at now things like reverse pairs, cross pairs, um, split pairs, those kinds of things in our cabling. And these are all relatively common. I've done them all at one point or another. It's easy to do. Um, so we need to recognize what they are so we know kind of what we're doing to try to fix them. Um, so they, they remind us it's relatively easy to reverse our primary and tracer colors. In other words, you know, white, orange, orange gets flip-flopped. It's easy to do that. Um, it's easy to do the greens and browns sometimes or the blues and the, the green, excuse me, the blues and the greens, especially when you have a wiring closet where there's low light and you're kind of back in the corner terminating. Uh, things like, this is going to sound nerdy, things like headlamps and flashlights and other stuff really do help with getting light on what you're doing so you don't mix up colors. They also remind us that doing things like our wire maps, wire mapping meters, yes, and visually inspecting our connections, looking very closely at the color code to verify is going to help. Yes, 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 yes. So, with that in mind, the first thing the first one they mention is the crossed pair and cross pair is wiring a complete pair in the wrong pin location in other words the entire wire pair you know white orange orange is wired in the wrong position so it's like having two wire pairs that have been swapped because if i take the white orange orange wire pair and move it to the wrong spot in my cable pin out those cables that were supposed to be there get moved so if I have the white, orange, orange get wired into the wrong spot, whatever wire pair is there needs to get moved. So it's like having two wire pairs swap places. Um, so here's our normal wire map. Again, everything straight through. Here would be a cross pair wire map. And you'll see the white, orange pair has been moved over accidentally to the green slot and the green, white, green, green pair over to the orange spot. Now, that is actually the pinout for a crossover cable, the traditional crossover cable. So, if I wanted a crossover cable, that's good. But again, if you remember the beginning of the chapter, we are looking for everything to be straight through in our horizontal cabling. So, this is actually a problem. And this is easy to do, especially if you punch in the um, patch panel at the, as the B color code. And over on your outlet end, you accidentally use the A color code. This would happen super easily. So a cross pair is one of those that seems kind of ridiculous when we're doing everything wired straight through, but it's easy to do when you do, you know, the patch panel one day and you do outlets, you know, Monday after the weekend and you're not thinking. It's real easy to use the wrong color code and that would create a cross pair. I'm actually flip-flopping, in this case, the oranges and the greens. So here's what it looks like on your continuity meter. I hook it up, I do the first test, I get a fail, and I see two pairs are not lit up on my remote end. As I go through and do the fault check, and I go through each pair, one, two will show cross, three, six will show cross, that would be the oranges and the greens, and then the four, five, seven, eight show pass. That's why they're showing here like this. So this is showing me these two pairs have been crossed accidentally. On my wire mapping meter, there it is, there's my orange and my green wire pairs flip-flopped. Okay, very easy to do. Again, like I said, you do the outlet one day as an A, you do the patch panel on the other day as a B. Bada bing, bada boom, you created a crossover or a cross pair. So repairing this guy, I do need to locate the faulty end. Um, patch panel is easy to check, so check that first. You can you know, throw a flashlight back there and look. Um, look at your color code, verify. And if that looks correct, then you got to go take the outlet apart and see if you wired the outlet wrong. That's a little tougher to see. But again, if that's the case, you, you know, cut it off, um, pull the outlet apart, re-terminate, bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. But i got to locate the faulty end. It's just one end, one end that's causing this usually. There's your cross pair. Reverse pair sounds similar, but it only involves one wire pair. And the one wire pair is flip-flopped wiring a pair in reverse order of on the opposite end. So it's like I took my white orange and my iron wires and flip-flopped them or swapped them when terminating. I've done this. A lot of times it's the white orange orange or the white brown brown. 
uh, as you're sliding them in a, you know, an outlet jack or whatever, those two little guys flip-flop and you don't see them and you terminate it, boom, you got a reverse pair. So again, here's my normal pin out, everything straight through, and the reverse pair, here's the white, green, green, gets flip-flopped. It's just the one pair gets flipped. That's it. It typically happens to me on the, the browns here on this end or the oranges on this end. That's typically where it happens to me when I'm terminating. So here would be a uh, reverse pair on my continuity tester. As I test, I get a fail. I see 7, 8. I see a 7, 8 is um, uh, not lit up. As I go through the fault check, I go pass, 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 and this guy 7, 8 lights up his failed cross. So I know the 7, 8 cross, and that would be the white, brown, brown, if you will. And if I look at a wire map, there he is. There's a white, brown, brown flip-flopped on the wire map tool. And again, that's that's the one that usually happens to me. The end, ends of like a patch cable kind of thing. The end wires on the RJ45 is where it typically happens to me. So again, uh, re repairing this guy, I got to find the faulty end. I got to do visual inspections, patch panel, um, outlet jack, visual inspections, get flashlights in there if you have to, or, you know, headlamp or whatever you're using, get some light on it, and then re-terminate that faulty end. All I got to do is find that faulty end and re-terminate. Split pair. Okay, this gets just a little trickier. Split pair is a condition where one of the uh, two wires in a wire pair is exchanged for one of the wires in another pair. So what happens is um, the white-orange wire gets swapped with the white-green wire. Just those two get swapped. So one wire of a pair is swapped with one wire of another pair. Now that sounds kind of crazy, but if you think of a low light situation, the white orange wire looks very similar to like a white brown wire. So you're in there terminating, laying out your you know connections, and you don't have enough light, you could very easily flip flop the white orange and the white brown, and now you have terminated the cable out of the proper order, and this is actually gonna cause a performance issue because I split my pairs apart. The the white orange wire, you know, the the orange pair, the white orange and orange wires, I split them apart so they're no longer shielding each other. They're no longer a twisted together canceling my signal. So I now have a whole bunch of crosstalk that's going on. And again, here's my normal wire map. My split pair is just that. Here's my white orange wire getting flip flop with the great white green wire. Uh, you know, I should see white, orange, orange, white, green, blue. I have white, orange, white, green. Those got flip-flopped. Actually, in this case, it's the green and the orange, but the same idea. Those got flip-flopped. And on my continuity checker, some continuity checkers pick this up, some do not. Most do not. Ours actually happen to pick it up. It'll show fail. It'll show, in this case, I have the 3, 6, and 4, 5. I go through and do my fault check. 1, 2 passes. 3, 6, and 4, 5 show a split. And over here on the side, again, I see 3, 6, 4, 5. Ours is actually pretty good. It picks that up. Um, most continuity checkers do not. My wire mapping tool, again, I see everything straight through. At a quick glance, it looks okay. But as I look at this green and blue pair, I see them split. I see them split. And again, this is a good example um, because the four or five, uh, the three, six, four, five, my greens and my blues, it's very easy to wire my cable uh, white, orange, orange, white, green, green, white, blue, blue, white, brown, brown. It's very easy to do that, and that is the wrong pin out. That is the wrong order. So when I do that, I get these guys in the middle as being split. Um, and again, this wire map is actually pretty good. It has come up and said, hey, you got a warning here. Something's not right. So what I have to do is look at the pinout on each end. I have to look at the pinout for both ends and check my color code. And since I have done this on both ends, you know, I flip-flopped in, in the example here, the, the greens and the blues. Uh, I did that on both ends. I actually have to re-terminate both ends of my cable run. Um, again, it's easy to do in a low light situation. I get some light in there and I check my color code and I, I would have to actually re-terminate both ends of my cable run on this one. He's a little tougher to diagnose. You need to be a little bit more persistent on this one. Excessive untwist. Uh, we remember from the standard we're allowed a half inch of untwist per termination. Uh, if I do too much, I'm going to have 
near on crosstalk issues. Uh, if sloppy terminations are going to allow crosstalk, if there's too much crosstalk, I'm going to get next failures. I'm going to get too, too much near on crosstalk. This is a performance issue. So with performance issue, my continuity meter is not going to pick it up. It's not designed to do that. My continuity meter, meter would show this cable run has passed. My wire mapping meter, same thing. It's not designed to pick this up. It will say, hey, everything looks fine. And it will show this is pass. But my cable certification meter is designed to test for near and crosstalk. When it tests for near and crosstalk, uh, or I do an auto test on it where I test the whole battery like we did the cable certification, it's going to come up as fail. And I look a little closer and I see some near and crosstalk uh, or return loss issues. And it's telling me, hey, something is not right here. There's my flag. Now I need to go look at my terminations and find the sloppy end and re-terminate. Um, so in this case, I need to do a visual inspection, outlet jack patch panel. Uh, again, the patch panel is the easy place to start. Look at that um, and maybe re-terminate the patch panel if I have too much untwist. Go back and look at my outlet and re-terminate my outlet and then re-scan or re-certify. That and shows up pretty easily, but only on the certification meter. The other guys are not going to catch it. So if I start having kind of phantom issues, throw your certification meter on here. Uh, if I'm dealing with a wrong category issue, well, this is one of those that, you know, uh, as you're installing a cabling system, we shouldn't be doing that. All of my components should match together. Uh, category 6 cabling, Category 6 patch panel, Category 6 outlet jack, Category 6 patch cables, all this should match. But if I'm having a wrong category issue, I literally need to look at all my components. You know, again, outlet jack, patch panel, patch cables, and replace the wrong category component. Again, this could cause a performance issue, kind of a plaguing performance issue. Kinks and bends. Um, as I'm installing my cabling, if I'm sloppy and uh, pulling cabling out of the box and it starts uh, getting loops and I pull it tight and it bends, these kinks and bends are going to cause little performance problems. Uh, coax is relatively resistant. Fiber, I can permanently damage the fiber because I'm actually breaking the glass fibers inside. I would need an optical time domain reflectometer to find that fracture and that problem. Uh, and, and, and in that case, I can actually fuse and splice. I can cut out the faulty area and fuse and splice that back together to fix it. Twisted pair, uh, these kinks and bends distort the geometry and cause near and crosstalk. They cause crosstalk issues. Uh, so I need to make sure that um, uh, as I'm installing, I'm being careful not to create these kinks and bends. Support with cable trays and nice uh, rounded uh, uh, bend radiuses as I'm going around corners and so forth. So with this guy, I need to actually go test with something like a cable scanner and it actually puts a graph out and I start seeing all kinds of little bumps on there. Those bumps are letting me know I got kinks and bends in my cabling. And I'm looking for, you know, distortion, dis color distortions in my cable jacket. Uh, I would need to replace my cable run. Uh, there's really not much else I can do with that. And again, support it uh, and, and get nice bend radiuses and everything on this so I don't have future problems. Wrong impedance. If I'm mix-matching cabling together, the impedance mix-matches are going to cause signal reflection. I'm going to get all kinds of attenuation and other issues. So in this one, um, I need to watch mix-matching cabling, review all my components again, replace anything that is not of the same standard, the same category of cabling, if you will. You know, if you will. I look at that and replace that. All right, uh, last one I'm going to come back, I'm going to talk about locating a cable and, and troubleshooting approaches.